Welcome to Sharing Your Vision. Thank you so much for being there with us, connected. We're gonna have a wonderful program and I wanna to present to you our special guest, John Sachs. He was voted Best Vocal Just Artist in South Florida by New Times Magazine. Welcome, John. Thank you for being with us. It's gonna be an amazing time, John. Well, it's going to be an amazing time because your family. So I'm just sitting here talking to my family, and it's such a blessing and an honor to meet you and to just discuss us. Amen. And we were talking behind camera how special it is to meet you because you're just a genuine human being, and you're so um, you're so caring, and you're 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 such a, a wonderful, warm person, uh, not only through your personality, but your music. And we're going to talk a lot about who you are, how did this all began, when did you know that you wanted to play an instrument, especially the saxophone? Wow, well, let me first start off by saying that family is everything. And um, it was my father who, um, when I graduated from high school, told me, God didn't give everybody everything, but he did give everybody something. And with that something, you can do anything. So that was kind of the foundation that was set. Um, so it was fourth grade career day. Imagine, um, tenth, um, I'm fourth grade and they came to career day and there was an engineer that worked for Johnson & Johnson. He came into the room, he said, who wants to learn how to fly? And you know, at that time, I'm. Superman, Batman, those are my inspirations. So I ran to the front and I said, I do, I do. And he said, okay, come up here, stand on the top of the chair, put your hands out and close your eyes. So I did that. And he said, are you flying yet? You know, fourth grade, I'm like, no, I'm standing up here with my eyes closed and my hands. You didn't teach me how to fly. He said, when you're ready to learn how to fly, let me know. And he gave me his card and I sat back down in the audience. So I just wanted to really learn how to fly. And because he was an engineer with Johnson & Johnson, I figured I might as well just figure out what he's talking about so that I can learn how to fly. And then he just so happened to be an engineer, um, an engineer for Johnson & Johnson. So I stayed and listened. And it just piqued my interest. And that same career day, the next rotation was the music class. And there was a saxophone player that played and I was just hooked by the sound. I don't know what it was about him. And so career day is where the foundation of both being an engineer and um, being a saxophone player started. Wow. Now, did you take lessons? Was it something that just came upon you really naturally? And that's how it all began, your connection with the instrument? Because it seems as you are one. And since you give it all in your expression and your emotions and what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're transmitting to everyone, it, it just impacts lives. And I'm just so amazed by it because I'm one of those. Well, for me, like I said, the foundation has always been my family. So when you decide that you want to be in the band or play an instrument, to start you off, you either got to pick the flutophone or the recorder so that you can build up the wind, build up the endurance for those bigger instruments. So the deal was for my mother and my father, if we get this saxophone for you, you're gonna play it till you graduate from high school because we want you to appreciate asking for something, working hard for it, and getting it. So once I mastered the flutophone, then they told me I would, they would grant me the opportunity to get a saxophone. So it was really my parents saying that. And then from there, they got private lessons for me. I took um, band class, I was in band camp. So it's always been a part of my life from that, from the duration, but it was really my parents. So we, you know, it was a fight, you know, cause I was an athlete too. So it was all, I always, no matter what happened, I always had to practice. Now you also studied engineering. How did that go about as far as the instrument, the musical side of John Sachs and the professional side? Um, music is a universal language, but for engineering, I was always good in math and science. Um, there was a guy that used to come on TV called Mr. Wizard. And he was an older gentleman that was to sit in his lab and just come up with like creative ideas. And it would just intrigue me. And I would watch him every morning. And it just kind of grew on me what you could do with engineering, just thinking outside the box, being creative and being imagined, uh, using your imagination to, to have anything you want to. And I grew up playing in church. So once I decided to play the saxophone, my pastor told me I would have to play in church every Sunday. I wasn't allowed 
in church without my saxophone. So I would play for him, I would open for him, I would close for him, I would do his funerals, I would do Wednesday night Bible study. And then also I would also have to do my parents. Uh, my mom is a retired elementary school principal and my father's a retired cop. So the family embraced it and so I had to play for everybody. But engineering was just something that was fun. And when I showed interest to my parents, my mom got me in various programs that helped um, implement the engineering side. And the same guy, Mr. his name is Mr. Thomas Graves, that I saw in career day, I actually studied underneath him for a summer and really got hands on. I went to Johnson & Johnson every day for a week and it just opened a whole nother side of engineering that I never thought I'd see. And he just so happened to work for Johnson & Johnson. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Now you were probably the entertainer of the family. Every time there was a gathering, I, I can imagine mom, dad wanting to hear you. Um, how did that uh, go about as far as learning how to get more in tune with the instrument and being able to transmit everything that you were feeling? Because there's different types of music. Mm -hmm. But going into the Christian-based music is very special because we were talking behind camera how you are able to connect with God because it's, it's, it's the voice mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that further? Um, okay, to me, I look at the saxophone as being the closest thing to the human voice. So, because I can't sing technically, well, let's put it like this, I haven't practiced to sing. I prefer to use the saxophone as my voice. So I take that voice and look at it as a conversation. And so, um, with gospel music, um, that's a, a personal conversation between me and God. And a lot of those hymns, a lot of those things are your struggles and how you overcame your struggles and rejoicing with the Lord and how good he's been to you, how good he's been to your your family. And my both my grandparents, um, my grandfather was always led in prayer. And the way he would pray, and by the way, he's 103. Wow. So the way he prays is amazing. And my of my grand and my other grandfather, he always led the male chorus and they always sang a cappella. And his one of his favorite songs was, I thank you, Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, I thank you, Lord. So those two kind of gave me the voice that I would use through my saxophone from watching one pray and watching one sing. So, you know, I had to join in some type of way. So I used the saxophone to praise the Lord as they did. So I grew up watching them singing and praying and I just kind of emulated what they would do and their personal relationship with God and how good God had been to them. And I just reflected it through my saxophone. That is so tender, so warm. And at the same time, you are a vessel of God. So God is able to transmit His voice mm -hmm. through the voice of music. Mm -hmm. So it's wonderful that you've already made that connection with God so God can make that connection with us. Yes, and music is a universal language, um, regardless of what you're playing for. Sometimes people don't want to hear the words. They just want to hear the music and allow the music because the music is going to affect you in a certain way. It's going to make you cry. It's going to make you sing. It's going to make you dance. And so in music as a spirit, and I just allow the spirit through me to reflect you and however you feel or however it makes you feel, then I am totally welcome to whatever that feeling is. Let's take this opportunity for you to express that which we just uh, described in music. What about um, Amazing Grace? Okay. And Amazing Grace just happens to be my, my grandparents' favorite song. So this unique way, I've been playing Amazing Grace since I was uh, 10 years old. So this one has a little reggae twist because I've been playing it so way, straight so <laughs> way for the longest time. I just wanted to give it a little touch. So I'm sure but. the audience is going to love it. <laughs>
I love the changes that you made. I love it because it brings an upbeat feeling to this mellow and sad song in a way because it makes you reflect on things and life. So I love what you did. It's just amazing. Oh, thank you. I just, I believe my motto has always been imagination where possibilities are endless. So if possibilities are endless, then it needs to be remixed and reimagined. You know, one thing I noticed is your shoes. I oh. love your shoes. <laughs> Well, you know, describe your shoes for us. <laughs> I knew I knew that I was going to come on interview here. So I wanted it's always the shoes, the hat, the tie. You know, I always wanted to present myself, you know, in a very remixed and reimagined way as I an entertainer. <laughs> and plus, I knew you were going to be here. So I had to make sure everything looked nice. Amazing. I'm <laughs> so happy that you did that. <laughs> it just makes it so exciting. I want to learn about the instrument itself. You were telling me earlier mm -hmm. before the interview that um, you have the different tonalities mm -hmm. and they don't look the same. Are they different not only in sound but also in a structure? Yes, ma'am. Um, I look at the saxophone as the closest thing to the human voice. And I think Adolphe Sax is the founder and inventor of the saxophones thought about that phrasing as well. So if you think about the saxophones, you have the soprano alto, out, the soprano saxophone, which is the straight one, and this is the alto. So if you think about choirs, you have your sopranos, you have your altos, you have your tenors, your berries, and your bass. And that same voicing is the same with the saxophones in intonation and quality is the same way that it's set up. Oh, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Tell me, have you ever gone through a certain endeavor, a certain situation in your life where um, there's a particular song, particular melody that really just gets, allows you to get through it much easier? My favorite song to play is The Lord's Prayer. Um, I grew up playing in the church and my grandparents always loved those hymns. It was always about the hymns. So I um, came up with a, uh, a album called Hymns According to the Gospel of Jazz, featuring the Lord's Prayer because those were the songs that my grandparents loved. And I think the Lord's Prayer, it's that prayer that you need for direct communication with God. And you know, you do the Lord's Prayer every day, just like you do the National Anthem. The National Anthem and the Lord's Prayer is probably the easiest hardest songs to play because everybody knows the words and the Lord's Prayer was just one of those songs that I grew up every day in church you had to sing the Lord's Prayer so I just wanted to present it in my own way just coming from my own voice using the saxophone so the Lord's Prayer would be that song. Wow beautiful and we're going to hear the Lord's Prayer a little later in the yes. program. Now um, what is your perspective as far as the music today with the music sound of maybe your grandfather? Uh, my grandfather pretty much likes everything that I play. Um, he's 103. And, Congratulations. You know, yes, and he's amazing. And his mentality is he's done everything he's wanted to do in life. He's just waiting for the good Lord to call him home. Wow. So I've never heard anyone say that before. And it makes your will and your vision, if you look at, somebody who says they've done everything that they wanted to accomplish in life. It's almost like I want to create a wheel for myself, put all the accomplishments that I ever want to have on my life and reverse engineer and create a vision board so that I can get to that point. Wow. And I think it's just that I even asked him, I said, Grandpa, what's some advice that you can give us us youth today? He said, what's the best way to stay out of trouble? I said, what? He said, don't get in it. And it's just that such that simple advice especially being 103, the things that he has seen, the things that he's endured, and he's always said, keep God first and don't never forget to pray. Wow, amazing. Well, I'm going to adopt it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you, do you have a particular testimony with your relationship with God? Um, you know, if you would have asked me that before the pandemic, I don't know what my answer would have been, but this pandemic kind of slowed everything down and gave me a control alt delete and it allowed me to find my purpose. And my purpose is to be a hope dealer, to deliver hope. Um, through this pandemic, my mother, um, she went back to school and got a master's in mental health counseling. And she only does that 
in, in the Christ, Christian counseling. And we started taking uh, lessons from Dr. David Jeremiah, and he does stuff seven days a week. And it got me closer to understanding the truth about God's wisdom, which is found in the Bible. And I understand that once you understand the truth, you can have hope. And because you're researching and developing that hope and all the things that you've gone through, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is in the Bible. The stuff that you're going through, somebody else has gone through, and sometimes worse. And that helps you develop your faith. And sometimes people can't see faith, but they can see faithful steps. And if they can see faithful steps, that means you just need to practice that hope. That's and true. as you continue to practice, you, be, you um, get into a hypnotic, hypnotic rhythm and it causes you to love. And when, once you get that love, um, Jesus says in the Bible that you're supposed to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so that gives you the charity aspect. And that means reaching out to your brother and your sister and loving them with unconditional love. And I've learned those five steps through this pandemic when it control off delete is that reset all the way back down to the very bottom where you I needed to turn my wounds into wisdom. And I look back over my life and seeing how good God's been to me. And it's almost like there's a this uh, COVID-19 has caused a purge and caused a an awakening of your faith and awakening of your love and your charity and your hope. And so my testimony is that I found my purpose in the truth through God's wisdom, which gave me more hope. And now I'm allowed to tell my story so that I can encourage other people to look at their wounds, turn them into wisdom, keep God first, because at the end of the day, he's the only one that's going to always be faithful to you no matter what. Wow. Amazing. Now I, now I see how you see people mm -hmm. because I see your personality is so warm, it's always friendly, it's always ready to talk, to share. And um, that's just wonderful because God lives in you. Mm -hmm. And that is the way that we should perceive others. Not look at their flaws or even their personality sometimes. There's some people are very hard to connect to. But if we can allow them to be able to for them to connect with us mm -hmm. then we're giving them an opportunity to see things in a different light in a different perspective and i know that you work with children mm -hmm. how does that relate when you deal with young lives for me um being part of a charitable organization has always been a part of the cloth from my family that I've come from, we've always been charitable, always been a part of charitable organizations. So I do a lot of career days um, that's involved in the charity. We teach kid etiquette class, we teach them how to tie ties, we teach them how to ballroom dance, and we teach them proper etiquette at the tables. And so what I always used to say is, if you could go back to your younger self and give advice to your younger self, what would that advice be? And I think that sometimes we need to connect with our younger selves because he even says in the Bible to be become as like a child in order to enter into heaven. Because I think that's when you dream big yeah. before you became an adult and you started mastering things and 20,000 hours to master your craft and you lose sight of that kid self. So what I think I did was I embraced the inner child and I just continued to bring them with me. And so I just try to share that there's nothing that you cannot do. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. But you have to believe in yourself. You have to tell yourself that you are amazing. And that's my motto when I go in there. I say, say to yourself, you are amazing. I am amazing. I am amazing. Because I want you to know that you are amazing. Because sometimes you are going to be the only person that's going to tell yourself that you are amazing. And amazing acts a certain way. Amazing is always joyful. Uh, amazing never gives up. Amazing, uh, you're going to trip over those hurdles. People are going to tear you down. But you need to know that you are amazing, that you know that you can endure no matter what. And I'm just someone who's going to just give you more fuel to let you know that you are amazing. I love you. And if nobody else told you, I love you. And I think that you are amazing. And amazing acts a certain way and believes and performs in a certain way. So that's all I try to focus. Wow, I feel amazing. Yes, see? You do need you to say Do you feel it. amazing? Because I feel you should amazing. You should say it. Say, I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm amazing. See, how do you feel? I feel amazing. See? <laughs> And this I is going to be an amazing interview. Yes, it, is. it already is. <laughs> you see, because you're amazing. Of course, we are amazing. We're both amazing. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I love it. I have some pictures here in our mm -hmm. video wall. Can you tell us a little bit about it? 
Um, the Affirming Youth Program uh, is a youth service in, uh, in Miami, and that's what they do. They affirm the youth to let them know that they are amazing. Woo, okay, love it. <laughs> and that saxophone there is, it's near and dear to my heart because um, that's actually, um, Growling Sax is the saxophone company, and they came to me in reference to me being a brand ambassador. And it's red, and it was red because uh, Miami Heat was the first um, client that I got when I was laid off from Johnson wow. & Johnson. And it was just, I went to Miami of Ohio. Their colors are red and white. I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi. And of course, love is red. I love, yeah. I love red. Yeah. I love it. And a red is, I think it's a, it's a powerful color and it represents passion and the color of amazing. Yes, I love <laughs> it. And we're amazing. Yes. And that, that's another picture of all three, the, the one I'm holding is the tenor saxophone. And like oh, we were okay. referencing, the two on the yes. bottom is the soprano. The one at the top right is the alto, and the one I'm holding is the tenor. Wow. Which one is easier or harder to play? Oh, there's no such thing as easier or hard. You know, they're all, you know, it's like when you're first born, you have to learn how to walk, right? Well, you are amazing. Oh, <laughs> oh well, thank you. It, it takes time. And this picture is with Don Shula. Um, this was probably one of the last performances that I played with him before he died. Um, we've been with the Miami Heat um, doing their entertainment on the club level for the last 10 years. And I've met him a couple of times, but this one was just really near and dear to my heart. We're holding hands. You know, this is the first time I had been that close to him. It was just amazing. This is uh, our client, Miami Heat. Thank you, Go Heat. We did, we did well against the Los Angeles Lakers, we might have lost, but go Heat always, Heat Nation. Yes. And they were my first clients, and that's my good friend, uh, DJ Mike T. He follows me all the way, that's my brother from another mother, and this is just us celebrating with them at the season ticket holders. Uh, you guys look great, amazing. We have fun, <laughs> that's what happens, that's what amazing looks like. Amen. <laughs> I uh, love this picture. Um, this is uh, um, one of my email pictures that when I go out and send this stuff, different clients, it gives my website, my logo and just I'm, I'm in Miami and uh, Miami's been home to me and I just enjoy playing for the city of Miami. And I love the suit and the hat. Those are custom suits. Those are uh, John Sachs originals. Um, my tailor did a good job and uh, our visions came together and I just let him go with it. And so it's just amazing. I like dressing. I like dra dressing amazingly. Yes, because <laughs> you are amazing. <laughs> And you truly are. Oh, no, From you. the bottom of my heart, you truly are. And I know that our audience is going to have the same feel and the same perspective that I'm having at this moment. Well, that's because you are amazing. Thank you. And you brought me into an amazing environment. I love being amazing. <laughs> John, what do you have in store for the rest of the year and the upcoming year now? Okay, so there, this all the stuff that we're talking about now was pre-COVID. So post COVID, I plan to take my entire brand animation and I want to present it in another way to further get to the kids. Um, I'm doing a lot of stuff with the saxophone, but I'm also doing a lot of stuff with my charity. So <clears throat> the lady in my charity, her name is Polly Wilkie and the, the Prestige Club was established in 1996 and she's an 84 year old young lady. <laughs> And so oh, her challenge for me joining the charity was she wanted me to do more stuff without the saxophone. She wanted to see what John Sachs could do without the saxophone. Uh -huh. So um, we are sponsored by uh, both Walt Disney World and Circus Soleil. So I have recently, or last year I did the human puppet. I had a handler that moved me around like a human puppet. I'm doing stuff in the bubble. I'm an LED saxophone player. So there's a lot of things that she wants me to do to present myself differently to show kids that yes, like you can play the saxophone, yes, you can be a musician, but there are other avenues that you can use to entertain, to uplift what amazing is. Okay. Amazing is not just one thing. Amazing is whatever you put your mind to. Imagination where possibilities are endless. So with pure imagination and endless possibilities, you can do anything. Wow. Now, can you tell that to our audience by giving them a message of being amazing, hopeful, and that there's just nothing that you can't do no matter what age you are? It is never too late. And remember, no matter what it is, you have to practice. You have to understand the truth about yourself. And if you believe that you are amazing, that will give you the hope.
and it will give you the faith and the determination and the perseverance to accomplish anything you want to. And yes, you're going to fail. Yes, it's going to be hard. But there is something that Nelson Mandela says all the time. He said, you never fail. You either win or you learn. So for oh, each each hurdle that you fall over, you just get up, dust yourself off and do it again. Because it's never going to be easy. Because if it was easy, everybody would do it. Exactly. And remember, if there's no struggle, there's no progress. Wow. Tremendous. I love it. Yeah. Well, we've come to the end of the program. Okay. So we're going to have the opportunity to listen to you one more time, the Lord's Prayer. I really appreciate this time that we've had. I want you to come back yes. to continue enlightening us and bringing so much joy and amazing things. Yes, yes. And, and I, I want to close with saying that God didn't give everybody everything, but he did give everybody something. And with that something, you can do anything. And that something is that you are amazing. Amen. Amen. Boy, we're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I truly feel it and um, definitely feel it and, and, and will continue to operate in that frame of mind mm -hmm. because it's true when you feel amazing and everything that you're doing you look at it as this is amazing because this is what God gave me so I'm gonna make the best and if he gave it to me he's gonna make it amazing for me to look at it in an amazing way isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And the great thing <laughs> about it. that is, is as the it. first song that I played before, is God's amazing grace and yes. His amazing favor that has brought us this far. Wow. That's why you're so amazing. Thank you. So are you. <laughs> Please tell the audience where uh, they can reach out to you, your social media, telephone number, any information that you want to share. Okay. I can be found at johnsax.com that's j o n s a w x cuz one x wasn't enough dot .com and all my social media platforms are john sax j o n s a w x because one x wasn't enough and um, at any platform youtube um, itunes spotify i'm easy to find you can always catch me once all this pandemic lifts up at playing the national anthem at the Miami Heat games and playing at the Miami Dolphin home games as well. Let's go Heat. Isn't he amazing? You are amazing. <laughs> Thank you, John. You are an amazing human being, an amazing saxophone player. Thank you so much for enlightening us, for bringing us so much joy and so much positivity in a, in a world where we're looking around and it just doesn't look the same. But nonetheless, God gave us a talent. He gave us something dear, and it is amazing. And thank you, because you are amazing. Thank you for thank inviting you. me to this amazing place that is so filled with the Holy Ghost that I just can't thank you enough for allowing me to share my story and, you know, to provide just a little bit of amazing hope for everyone to have and to digest on and so that they can love. So thank you for being so amazing. Thank you, John. Thank you for being there with us. And we're going to enjoy now an amazing song, The Lord's Prayer.
Este fue tu programa Compartiendo la visión Bajo la conducción de Ilén Enríquez Les invitamos a que nos busquen en Facebook Como Compartiendo la visión O síguenos en todas las plataformas De OVM Radio En las redes sociales Como Facebook, Twitter, Instagram Y a través de www.ovmradio.com Les esperamos en nuestra próxima edición De este tu programa Compartiendo la visión Thank you.